Okay. Um. Ah. Okay. Sorry, still figuring out how all this goes. Okay. Let's get the hair back out of the way. just learning how to get mob crush all put together okay so this is gonna be interesting oh, da -da -da -da. Okay, so we got some goodness going on. Hey, Cosmic! Ugh. Okay, so everything's a little bit... Eh, everything's a little bit crazy. Ha! Huh. So... <laughs> right? Right? So you guys are actually now on Mob Crush. Um, yes, you're still on uh, Twitch. But I've connected with a couple other platforms, so this should be interesting to see who comes and joins us and whatnot. But hello, guys! How you doing? Um, so I'm going to be doing some uh, face masks today. Uh, let me grab the one that I actually already completed, and then we'll get into some of the other stuff. Those are just my pins and whatnot. So, yeah, stuff has been a little bit crazy. Uh, we now have a, uh, what do you call it, um, a mandate or an order that's in place. And it is to let people know that, hey, you got to have a face mask when you go on outside and uh one of these days i'll have to go back out there because technically i'm an essential worker but i didn't feel quite right for a couple of days i wasn't sure if it was just allergies or if it was a cold or flu or something more it's just allergies quite literally just allergies but i wanted to make sure that everything was okay but since we have to do all that goodness with a face mask and whatnot i decided to actually make one for myself Okay, so, goes over, and that goes up. There we go. There we go. So yeah, it actually sits up on top of the head. And as you can see, it, like, it full covers, it doesn't slip. It's really nice, but I have to uh, breathe slowly because it is like super dense and tight. <laughs> right, right, but yeah, and yes, I have dyed my hair before, sorry, let me take this off, so, ugh. and, of <laughs> oh, I'm a dink, I accidentally got wrapped up in my earring, uh, but yeah, I wanted something that fit really, really close to the face, so that, um, I'd have the most control. But yeah, the whole reason I made it so that it does that thing is so I can literally just pull that up and over. And I only have to grab basically one set of strings and I can stay away from my face. Um, but yes. Yay! Really? Oh. <laughs> I was like, piece of thread, don't ask. Um, 
But yes, I have dyed my hair before. I've done like really bright electric colors. Um, of course, I had to bleach the hair back then. Um, but yeah, I've actually, I've thought of like putting bright eclectic colors in what I have now. I just haven't necessarily done it. <laughs> Weird. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, my phone was just losing its mind. I was like, what the? Oh. It's because it's logging to everything. And everything is letting me know. Doo, doo. Yay! Hello! Oh, heck yeah. Bullshit. You can do it at home. You just have to be smart about it. Definitely read the instructions and be really careful about like how much you're using, what kind of bleach you're using. Make sure that you're protected because um, some of those activators, some of the chemicals and whatnot that you use to dye your hair can actually be rather caustic. Um, I, I accidentally got bleach on my hand, just the powder, and didn't think anything of it. And, you know, just gave my, my hands a quick rinse but didn't really do much else because I was dumb and I was young and I was dumb <laughs> and um, because I didn't thoroughly wash it with um, soap and water and really get my skin cleaned off um, I ended up getting just little they were minor but they were little blisters and yeah that was it was all from not washing properly when I was a child teenager <laughs> but yeah Oh yeah, no, you would just need a really, just a light activator, like, I want to say like a level one, maybe a level two at most, um, but yeah, yeah, mine, I had to go with like a level four, so of course, <laughs> a lot more damaging and caustic, but yes, okay, so we'll keep talking, I'm going to actually get this set up so it's over my shoulder. I've got too many electronics. Hi, you're gonna get to see things up close. There we go. Okay. I should have had that put into place beforehand. I just didn't think of it. Okay. There you go. Sorry, I was having lunch. What can I say? Okay, so for the most part. There we go. Ta-da! Uh -uh. Yeah, I was about to say, go with something that's a little bit brighter. It's going to fade down to that kind of pastel -y pink. Um, but, yeah, I know there's, like, a lot of really great um, hair colors out there. And I think there's a new one that it... it goes in like a conditioner for your hair. You let it sit for a couple of minutes and then you can rinse it out. Leaves your hair really nice and soft and manageable, but gives you like pastel -y colors and lasts for, I think a couple days to a week-ish. And then you just, you know, put it back in. You can change our colors as you want. So yeah, there's absolutely, um, there's options. There's options. So yes. Okay, so we can continue to talk and whatnot. And I'm going to get all of this. I'm going to start pinning everything together because it's always the little things that take, honestly, the longest. And apparently I have gotten a mixed bag of pins and needles. And yes, there is a freaking difference. Okay, 
So for those of you who don't know, there's like a lot of people will want to pin going like this direction, thinking that they can pull the pin out in time. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But the easiest way to do it, especially so you don't have to take out a needle, or I'm sorry, take out a pin, oh, there's a difference, is to pin it this way. And I'm using silk pins, so they're super thin, very, very fine. They tend to slide in really, really easily. I've accidentally uh, nailed myself a couple times with silk pins. and They hurt, but they don't leave nearly as much of a mark as, say, a T-pin or... Um, a satin pin. There are different pins for different things. A T-pin is used for tapestry or like heavy stuff for curtaining. Uh, a satin pin of course used for satin which is a little bit you know thicker gauge uh, than the silk pin that I'm using. Now if I was hanging this up on a dummy like doing patterning it's I think it's a 65 degree angle but if you're just pinning everything into place. Just, just, just put it in. Don't fuss with it. But yeah, you can literally lay that in, do your stitch, and your stitch is, is long enough that it skips over. You rarely, rarely hit these. Even if you do, it doesn't tend to do too much damage. Uh, and you can usually just change out your needle and you're good to go. Okay. So you're putting the quote-unquote wrong sides together. So notice, I'm going to get this a little bit closer. Notice this is kind of like stitch work. But clearly on the other side you have little raised uh, fluffy bits. Um, because this has some chenille work to it. But yes. But yeah, no, no, no. If you're going to go pastel, go a little bit darker, a little bit brighter at first, and it will definitely fade down to the color that you want, usually within like a couple of weeks, like a week, maybe two. And since you have blondish hair, it makes it so much easier. Oh, that reminds me. Let me... Not totally... If this says I have a unified chat. Oh, okay. Okay, so apparently it doesn't unify with that. I'm still trying to figure out all of the, the different stuff. Yay! Hello people on Facebook! Sorry, this was me trying to figure out um, how to get everything to work because I'm using a, um, a, a site called Mob Crush. So now, people on Facebook land and Twitch and um, quite a few other uh, platforms can now tune in to watch me. Um, I'll be doing art, I'll be doing sewing. Um, I'm very much in the mood to do some design work and maybe even outfits, outfits that incorporate masks. Because you know, why the hell not? I've actually got some lovely beadwork fabric that I want to make into a dress with um, with a uh, a face mask that goes along with. So, yeah, no, I'm just saying. And yes, I drafted the pattern for this. So, it hits underneath the chin and then goes along the side of the face over the bridge of the nose. And there's actually, there's a wire piece that's inside that sits across the nose and can be adjusted inward so that it forms a, actually a really nice um, seal. Um, I'm not going to be sprinting anywhere <laughs> anytime soon. Not that I'd want to in the first place, but um, yeah, definitely not running in this mask, but you know, 
Um, no, it's not. It's usually bleach your hair, um, wash it out, let it, you know, rest for a couple of minutes, and then usually layer in the dye, let it set. All depends on what kind of dye you get. Some of it's more complicated than the others. Yay! <laughs> I don't know why I only see, like, okay, so I see the the YouTube, or not YouTube, I see Facebook here, I'm seeing Twitch here, do I also need to clock in on other platforms? I might have to clock in on uh, other platforms to see who's doing what and where. Come on. I'm still trying to figure everything out. Huh, yeah. Oh man, I gotta update some of this stuff. Slowly figuring this stuff out. Yay! Okay. Slowly figuring this stuff out. Got so many, got so many different things up right now. Okay, I'm actually gonna close that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Foil is for professional salons. Um, not everything requires foil, and foil is usually if you're doing. Um, different colors or different sections. So if you're doing highlights or different colors and whatnot, that's why you would have um, uh, the foil layering in your hair. Um, if you're just doing an all-in-one kind of thing, um, usually you just need like a shower cap. So, you know, reasons. <laughs> I keep grabbing uh, sewing needles. I'm one of those people who, yes, I will sit here for hours on end. Ooh, that's a satin needle. No, thank you. Hours on end sorting my freaking needles and pins and whatnot. So, yeah. Okay, so as you see, wrong sides together. And then pin it all in place every, you know, inch, half an inch, half an inch or so. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is true, nothing wrong with being organized. Honestly, I thought I had pre-organized a uh, thing of pins. Right now, that's like reaching into a shark tank and trying to pet one. <laughs> nope, that's a satin. Well, yeah, that's a satin pin. It's a very thin satin pin, though. <laughs> you know, honestly, I think seamstresses, tailors, people who work with this stuff on a very, very regular basis are the only people who could do this and literally oh my god I have literally spilled a thing of pins in bed don't ask 
I was being a dumbass. I was trying to sew in bed, you know, hand stitch. Um, spilled it, got my magnet out, got them all up, or at least so I thought. Went to bed, no problems. Woke up the next morning, no problems. Come back, throw back the covers because I'm going to make the bed, and find like three or four pins in just different parts of the bed and the sheet, and yet never. No, no scratches, no pokes, no nothing for an entire night. So, I've reached into my purse to find stuff, and I have, you know, blades and pins and seam rippers and, and stuff in there, especially when I was uh, still at college. And just, yeah, no, I had no problem with it. Anybody else reached into that bag? Oh, they were going to, they were going to come out bleeding. But yeah, no, I mean. I don't know, I guess you work with them long enough or something. Show them enough respect and they respect you back. And hello, Ms. Michelle. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah, first we put all of our wrong sides together, get everything, um, pinned together and whatnot. And of course I've got a bunch of random thread. So does anybody have any questions while I'm putting this all together? It's completely okay to ask. Hello Kovlid84, how you doing? I am guessing you... Ah, oh, yes, it does say you are from the Mixer channel. Hello! I just opened up my Mixer uh, a little bit more recently. Um, this is all on Mob Crush. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're having fun doing that. And right now we're just putting um, all the different pieces together for um, a full face mask. And I've already... Um, I already did the candle test for um, the fabric. Now, if you think you have fabric that is thick enough to, uh, to, to do a face mask and whatnot, but you're not totally sure if it's thick enough or, or if it's a tight enough weave, you literally take the material, basically press it up against the, your mouth, forming mostly a seal, and then blow through it at a lit candle. And I mean, you don't have to be like on top of the candle, but you know, from a couple of inches away, you should not be able to get the flame to move and you should not be able to blow it out. If you can blow it out or if you can really get movement on the on the flame, then it's not thick enough, it's not dense enough, it doesn't have a heavy enough weave. Um, so it's you're just gonna be passing air in and out and that does you no good. So make sure that your material is thick enough and heavy enough that it can hold up to um, uh, you. <laughs> I'm trying not to use all my big words, uh, just so it does. You can't respire through it. You can't get moisture coming through it. You can't get a lot of air coming through it, um, because the virus that we're working with right now, nasty little bugger, is tiny. Even by viruses standard, I believe it is uh, apparently a very small bug. So you got to be super careful. Hence the reason they're using um, the N95 and the N99 masks because they filter out like 95 to 99% of the microns or the little little particles in the air um, and that is definitely needed right now. Hey Shells, how you doing? Shelly, sorry, Shells. Mm. I'm on Mob Crush. Anybody can, I've got a couple of different chat windows up so anybody can ask questions and whatnot it might just take me a little bit of a minute to um, get around to, to answering your questions. Do, do, do. Yeah, that is just that is that is an ancient needle waiting for bad things to happen to me. I'm so, I'm so used to answering to people's um, tags and handles 
on a lot of these things that, yeah, after a while, just, it's a thing. Um, ugh, darn it, I just, I swear I can do this. Um, so I'm charging roughly five to ten dollars, and that basically just covers the, the material cost, or not, I'm sorry, not the material cost, the time cost for it. Um, the materials I'm a little bit less worried about at the moment. So, yeah, like five to ten dollars plus shipping. And if you're in California or if you're in the United States, it gets to you within like, mm, I want to say a day or less, usually, or I'm sorry, a day or so, sometimes less. Oh, okay. I believe I have uh, more of this nice heavy weave silken material. So I can get a couple more um, cut out and probably put together by tonight. Just tell me where to send them to. Um, I know that um, in California, Riverside County right now has a ordinance um, where you have to have a face mask um, when you go out. Um, they are really, really, really trying to, to make sure people are um, safe. And if you walk out without a face mask on and they decide to be ticky tacky about it, uh, it's like a thousand dollar fine. So yeah. Um, either which way, uh, I'm just trying to, to limit, um, too much contact only because I have actually, no, I've actually been pretty good for the last couple days. I haven't been out around many people. So no, actually a pickup should be fine. I was about to say, if I, if it had been one of those things where I'd been out and about, I'd say, let me ship it to you. And then of course you wash it and do all that kind of good stuff. Um, but yeah, pickup should be fine. I gotta double check my count just to make sure I have all of my pieces. But yes. Yeah, I'm going through all of my, my storage and um, stocks right now just to uh, see what fabrics I have. That works. That yeah, definitely works. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you don't know, I am a delivery person. So I do delivery for um, foodstuffs. And I am also, um, I have a food handler's permit. And the entire thing about food handler's permit is they are drilling you, drilling you, drilling you on cross-contamination, contamination, illness, what's safe, what's not safe, how to keep clean, the whole nine, how to change our gloves. I'm registered for CPR, the whole nine. So I know a lot about cross-contamination. Ah, these last couple days, last couple weeks even, watching people wear masks incorrectly has driven me up a wall on so many levels. Hey, Edward, how you doing? Okay, uh, let me make sure that I've got a couple of nose pieces made. So this is just your regular heavy gauge floral wire. Um, floral wire, for the most part, is pretty much waterproofed, um, does not rust easily. I know that I've got a pair of snips around here somewhere. I just can't seem to find them. So I'm just going to have to do this till it pops. There we go. Okay, so you want roughly four inches of heavy gauge floral wire. And then what you're going to do with that is grab with a small piece of needle nose and wrap it back on itself. So it basically it creates a loop. And you want to get that loop as close to touching as possible. And not only does that make it so that the um, so that the the end that might be a little bit more rough is no longer um, there. Let's see, yeah, outwards, roughly in the middle. Okay, so there you go. That is 
the nose piece. And this can be, you know, pushed and pulled as need be so that it actually forms a tighter um, seal kind of around the bridge of your nose and keeps the mask in as close to your cheeks as possible. Um, you don't want a lot of air going past your nose, which is your first line of defense, or into your mouth, which is your second line of defense. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that was like the number one thing I kept seeing was people were wearing this part of the mask wrong. So their nose was completely exposed or there was these giant gaps and I'm like, oh my God, you're driving me up the wall. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, feel free to message me at any point in time and we will, uh, figure out the best way to get those masks to you, dear. Okay. I'm just going to do a couple of these real quick. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And if you have if you have friends or family or people who uh, have an interest in learning how to make this mask, by all means, share this video um, or any cast that I do that has this on it. By all means, I don't mind people making their own. I am definitely up on offer if people need one made. Um, you know, if they don't have the sewing skills or whatever, by all means. Um, and people can always, you know, throw donations at me. I've got uh, different ways you can get funds to me so that I can get stuff made and get set to you. So no worries. We will figure this one out. A certain amount of straightness on these. Okay, so we've got several nose pieces made, ready to go. I'm going to move some of this stuff because, you know, reasons. Um, you will also need roughly 28 inches of elastic. I've got a really nice heavy cord elastic, um, but some people uh, prefer like a flat elastic. Um, that's also like perfectly fine. Just make sure it's good, strong elastic. Um, you don't want anything that's going to relax or, or um, loosen over time or overheat during the day. So, and it should be able to withstand quite a bit of washing as well, because you're going to need to do that. Um, I'm going to move some stuff around. You're good, you're good. Okay, that can stay there. We're going to put this up here, getting this moved over just a touch. I know everything's a little bit of a little bit of a mess. This is actually way heavier than it looks. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. I was like, where did... Oh, here we go. Chaos. You are my namesake. Making sure that I don't have anything that is, like, directly in the way. Okay. We'll start from the bottom. Get about six inches, pull it back that way. Lower the foot, lower the needle. Make sure that my tension is on my thread. Okay. I want a pretty tight weave because I don't want anything pulling itself open once I once I pull it open. I want you know things separating and whatnot. Okay, so forwards, backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards. Just like one or two stitches usually. Forwards. see it's a nice tight stitch um, and once you pull it open I'm actually gonna set these to the side where did all my pin rests go sorry 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 Ugh. here we go pin rest no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Years of practice and a little bit of insanity. What can I say? So, yeah, I will go back and I will iron this open. As you see, if I give it a pull, you're not seeing like big gaps coming in. And basically you go back in and you want to clip it along the curve if you really want to and then you iron it open so that it lays flat if not it's going to want to keep separating and if you if you're really worried i mean this is so thick that so thick and so tight that it does not readily breathe um but yeah if you're worried about this not being enough go ahead and put a layer of interfacing cloth interfacing um, on this to help filter it out or so in um, HEPA filter. Um, HEPA filter though does need to be washed so you can do a pocket method. There's a lot of different ways but this is what I'm doing. Okay so we're gonna put a bunch of these together real quick. This is actually the the bottom side of the chin so those will come in just a moment. I felt like, oh yeah, I was like, something cleared. Do, do, do. Let me see if I can, ah, there we go. Okay, let me show you how to re-thread real quick. Okay, so behind, around, so it's Comes from here, goes around, slides under, and through this little goal post, down this little sliver, back up again. Basically, you make a big wide U turn because there's a little hook in here that it picks up. Down, there's a little another hook on the back side of that. 
take your foot off the pedal. That is like one of the biggest things. Take your foot off the pedal. And then you get just the end of it from front to back. through your needle. Um, some machines have a, an auto um, an auto threader. This one does not, so I have to do it by sight. I do not fear my machine. I do respect it on the other hand. And I know that um, pardon. I know that any machine can be really, really jumpy and do bad, bad things to you if you don't uh, respect what it can do. So please always respect your machines. Uh, let's see. I'm actually trying to do a half screen. Gosh darn it. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit easier to see. Yay! Okay, there we go. Okay, and then also I'd like to check my lower bobbin, because those things run out like nobody's business. Oh no, I've got a, I've got a good mount on there. Now, it, to bring your this thing back up through, basically you just hold onto the tail, rotate the hand wheel on this side towards you, it goes down, it grabs it, you bring both of them out, and then both of them back underneath this foot. I've got a little razor that's on the side of that that most people cannot see. And I will try and find one place to put all that thread because, you know, reasons. Now if you want to, of course, you can um, use a serger and serger all the edges first. Um, that'll create less fraying. Um, certain materials you can actually just run a lighter past it and you're totally fine. It'll just seal it shut. I'm not too worried about those because they're all heavy materials and I'm using a very tight stitch so they're not going to wander and it does not have a tendency to fray so I'm okay with that. That's got to be a little bit longer. There we go. Most people try and force the direction, not realizing that it actually doesn't take very much um, pressure at all in order to uh, change direction of how your fabric is going into your machine. Um, just a little bit of pressure um, either direction can really change the course of how uh, your material is going through the machine.
Any questions so far? Right now, this is the color that I have. Um, I think I have enough for a couple more masks in this color. Um, I have four that are already spoken for. Fifth one is on myself. Um, I'm going to be looking through all of my different fabric stores, hopefully within the next day or so. So if you want to order a mask, um, at this point in time, I'm going to say $10. Uh, $10 will get you a mask. Um, and it, it will definitely meet my candle test because I'm not sewing anything that wouldn't actually be protective. Um, if you're going to do yours out of cotton, you need at least four layers. Um, you need something that is strong enough and heavy enough and tight enough of a weave or has enough layers that um, you can't get air through it super quick or super fast. You can't be able to um, blow out a candle or really move a flame with it. If it's loose enough that you can really move flame or you can blow out a candle, it's not doing any good. As you see, it goes together pretty quickly. Honestly, the part that takes the most time is cutting out your fabric and then ironing everything. And ironing everything actually does make a huge difference in how well everything fits and how well it, um, you know, covers and puts together. Iron, iron, iron your seam allowances. Even if you hate it, because I hate it, iron your seam allowances. I do love my machine. It's a Husqvarna Viking. Not a cheap machine at all, but oh my goodness, beautiful workhorses. I absolutely adore my machine. Now there you go. That's basically your, your first. Um, what I'm going to do is turn this off for a second. Ugh. Boy, you want to get a workout, just do curls with that thing. <laughs> and let me get this here.
Yeah, okay. Regular iron. Um, I've got it on a very high setting because I want it to put a permanent crease in and really, you know, flatten that out. And I just need to find... Where did I put my ham? Excuse me, I have to go find my ham real quick. Oh, there it is. <laughs> ham! <laughs> So if you don't know what that is, um, I'm also going to grab a, a small ironing board. So this funny little thing is called a ham. Why? Because it looks like a canned ham. I find them hilarious. But yes, this is a canned ham. And what it's for is for things that are heavily curved, like the inseam that you would have on a sleeve, um, or the crotch line that you would have on pants, all of those are heavily seamed. So for this, you basically find the part of the curve that works the easiest or the best for you. and then just lightly touch. I didn't even need like steam or anything for this part of it. But if I if I find a really difficult area, I give it a little bit of steam. But yeah. This makes it so much easier to get a good line. Now you can turn down your steam or turn up your steam. That all depends on you. Um, but be really, really careful. Like, I can't even stress enough. You think a, a sewing machine is scary? To me, an iron needs even more respect. Not just because it's hot, which it frickin' is. Um, it's the steam that it puts out. Uh, when you have steam, that means you flash boiled something. Or that it's hot enough that it's boiling, basically. Um, and if it's boiling and it gets it hits skin, yeah, it can do damage pretty quickly. So just be just be respectful. Don't ever be afraid of your tools, but be very respectful of your tools. Um, I had a great teacher, I believe her name is Eilina Parsons. If you know Eilina, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Wonderful, amazing Russian teacher at the design school that I went to. And she told us, don't ever put anything in front of a machine that you're not willing to lose. And then Sophie Kaufmanian, another great teacher at that school that I went to, um, said the exact same thing. And they meant it. If you're not willing to lose whatever you're putting in front of a machine, don't put it there. <laughs> and that means body parts as well as, as the project that you're working on. So, you know, be mindful. Okay, so now you see this has got a nice curve to it. Let me face this over again. Okay, so now you see you've got a bit, bit of a cleaner line. Yes, I, I know I should probably go in there and that's going to bother the crap out of me. <laughs> So yeah, go in, make sure you iron it flat on both sides so you get your, your seam line open the way it's supposed to be open. Okay, so that's one. And then I'm gonna keep it paired. That way I know that I'm that I've got the right amount of everything cut while I'm doing it. And if anybody has any questions or anything they'd like to say, by all means, feel free. I am, I am the Gabby type, I do like to chat. Now there are also smaller irons, um, little hand irons, even um, like small single blade um, that are meant for very, very small works. I just happen to only have this one, unfortunately, 
Um, I don't have any of the specialty tools when it comes to ironing, or else I might be using those, but I am not bothered. Okay. And don't worry, I can hear when this thing is ramping up to let a little bit of steam loose. It has a particular sound to it that I can hear. <laughs> Years of doing this, you learn real quick. Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure that my lines more or less meet up. Okay, that is a good pairing. So those are front and back, because you're going to be doing... Um, you're going to be doing pairs of these. And basically, for each one of these that you have, you'll be pinning it onto the little chin rest. The middle of the chin rest should hit the middle of this. It's going to be pinned, I'll show you. Pin it all together, that's going to be ironed. And then we're, we'll go into the stitching phase of it. Do, do, do. I'm trying to make sure to keep everything paired up so that um, I, I know that I have enough of these. And again, just pull it snug. Oh, and for people who may have noticed that I have a, um, a mature filter on, uh, that's just because I swear a lot at times. Um, and I don't need to influence any small children as to creative vocabulary. <laughs> okay. There's one. Now, if you ever find, like, a loose stitch at the top, um, of your seam line, definitely go in and either put a couple more stitches on using your machine or do it, do a hand stitch and really make sure that that is closed off because you don't want it splitting open um, if pressure is put on it later. That has created some nightmares. I have learned the hard way. There we go. Yeah, here. So basically, if, if you run your finger down it, it'll spread it open, it'll pretty much stay, and then when you put heat to it. Now, if you haven't found me on Twitch, um, or you don't know who I am on uh, anything else, Dame Red Bento is the thing that you want to go looking for. I might be in the, I'm technically on the wrong page on the Facebook thing. I'll get that squared away. I'm still learning. Okay. Okay. Now, if you have to choose which um, piece of the mask you're going to see on the outside versus the inside, come on, follow. You can do it. First off, I guess I'll have to go in and do that. Anyways, um, if you need to find me, do, do, do. that's all I was looking for. Sorry. Fixing. 
Oh, don't know. Oh, I'm pretty. Okay. There we go. I don't know why it does that. Okay. Sometimes it does that. I swear to you. Oh, because I hit it too many times because I was being dinged. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Ta -da. Okay, so if you're going to have to decide on, hey, I've got this really cool fabric and it's got some stuff on it, which part should I show? If you can, cut part of the mask without too much um, extra on it. And then the other part of the mask can have plenty of shiny, pretty things on it. And make the stuff with the shiny pretties the outside of the mask, and the one without so much the inside of the mask. So yeah, we've got that pair. Oops. I'm gonna put some chin rests with that. Let me make sure that I've got... Yeah, okay. Hey Noel! Hello! You've joined the Mob Crush Twitch Mixer every type of social media channel I could have going at one particular time. And I'm currently putting together some masks. If you have any questions, by all means, do feel free to ask. Notice the front part of this mask is actually not a whole lot of excess. Uh, let's see, that one's an inner. I've got a couple of sets of chin rest there. Yeah, inner, outer, inner, outer. Okay. Okay. Paired. Paired. Now, when sewing, do avoid putting your hands about your face. Because sometimes you'll forget that you have a pin in your lip. At least I do sometimes. Um, but more importantly that um, sometimes there are finishing chemicals on fabrics and they don't taste great. Um, and at the very least, you'll get thread all over your fingers and that doesn't taste great either. So yeah, I'm just saying.
Okay, so you put it on your ham. Now, if you've got a heavy curve, like some of these, some of the nose pieces are a little bit on the heavy side of the curve. Um, if you have a heavy curve, then feel free to kind of clip, not to the seam line, but very close to the seam. Uh, let me find a really sharp pair of scissors if I'm going to try and do that. I swear, I, no, it's over there. So yeah, if you're going to clip a curve, basically, it is flat and just use the very edge and you want to be like an eighth of an inch away from where the seam is because you don't want it to run outwards and if you're worried about it put like a little fray check um on it and that'll just that'll stop any possible fray but when you clip it like that it allows it to slide past itself just a little bit um, and, and reduces the amount of uh, bulk or weirdness that you might have on the same line. It also releases some of the tension and the stress that um, is normally in fabric as you twist and pull and move it. And so it'll give it a nice, nicer lay. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that was quick. And easy. And oh, okay. Unplugging that. Okay. So next thing you're gonna do. See how this is the right side? This is the wrong side. Put your right sides together, making sure that you have, this is the nose top, this is your chin, it goes underneath this, this part right here. So you want to make sure that you put that there. and pin every mm, half an inch to an inch. If it's really, really fiddly, um, thin, movable material, then you're going to have to pin it like every half an inch. It can be a real pain, but you know, it happens. pretty easy. As you see, I'm just gently sliding things into place. And again, you want your needles to be, not your needles, that's my own personal thing. Um, your pins are going to be laying perpendicular, basically a T intersection. Um, to your fabric and that way you can sew past them without um, worrying about having to remove them.
Now some people do like to trim their seam lines down just a little bit. Um, taking off the edge of those is also perfectly fine. Um, I tend to pin everything first and then trim if need be. Right now I'm just trying to get this not to be a dick. <laughs> so I don't accidentally knock you over. Do, do, do. Sorry, you probably can't see it because it's so small. In, then back out. And you're like, how do you not hit your hand? Eh, years of practice. But also, Notice where my fingers are. I know that I've got about a mm, quarter inch on either side. I go in at the halfway mark so I don't hit it. And then as I flip the needle around, when I, fl when I flip the pin around, that's gonna forever. Mm, I got way too comfortable saying those. But as I flip it around, I can see that it's, I can feel that it's hitting me across the nail. So basically all my finger does is shift I lay it flat, I can feel it, again I move my finger, and then I just push it through. So yeah, it's it's years of practice and whatnot. It's a little bit of sorcery, I will admit. <laughs> okay, so we've got the face mask now put together, and once I get them all put together, I'm going to stitch past these rounds, but first I'm going to get them all put together. Hello, hello, hello. The boring part as I'm pinning everything into place. And usually I'd be like, ah, oh, now I can do this freehand. Well, no, these need to be made to a very particular standard, so I am taking a bit more time, effort, and care to make sure that I've got the best match possible so that I've got the best fit possible. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. I am the very chatty sort, and I have no problems answering questions. And it doesn't just have to be like sewing advice or anything. I talk about everything. And again, you're just making sure you got your right sides put together. Thank you. 
So I usually put two pins at the basically the back side of the jawline. And then make sure that my middle matches up with my middle. Right there. And oh, more silk pins. Oh, that's where I put that. Mm -hmm. I have to show you this. This is one of my favorite kinds of needles, and darn near impossible for me to find. If anybody finds me these needles, I will be internally eat internally in your debt. Um, they're a type of leather needle or an autopsy needle <laughs> and um, they're, they're meant to go through leather. So they've got kind of a flat blade um, that has just a little bit of a recurve on it. So you, when it slides through something, it slides through and you can get great leverage off of these. But yeah, just slip straight through. Now, I've hit myself a couple times with these and you don't feel it. That's the most horrifying, but also one of the best aspects of it. Because it's shaped the way it is, it slides in and slides right back out. It leaves minimal damage. Um, but yeah, I love these, but it is super, super, super hard to find them. So if anybody ever finds these uh, flat blade kind of leather working slash autopsy needles and can get me some, Happy camper. Let's just say that. I thought I'd honestly lost all of mine. Yes, I know the difference between a pin and a needle. Partially by so. Oh, hey! Oh, now I'm finding all of them, really? Yay! Ugh. So I might be working with tapestry later on, so um, I like to have those at the ready, because tapestry is, is a very dense um, and willful fabric. Yeah, here's that needle. So yes, there's a difference between satin and silk. I can feel the difference. And there's also a little bit of a difference in the way the pin head is shaped. So.
and then once these are all put together I will put them through a very hot sanitizing bath and dry them. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Is my volume okay or is it not so good? I just need somebody to let me know because sometimes uh, I don't always plug in my earphones so that I can't hear the feedback loop. Um, so sometimes I just need somebody to tell me whether or not uh, the sound is working correctly or not. Or I guess I could always uh, check. That's right, I could always do this. Oh yeah, yeah, I've got sound. Cool. Okay, so again, we're just pinning everything together. It honestly makes for um, a better fit, better lay, um, getting everything put together. Takes forever though, the pinning, the details, the, always the longest. Yeah, we'll just we'll we'll do two for now. That way I can, because I can do the next two without people watching. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so uh, that was the easy part. <clears throat> okay, so let me see if I can get you guys a little bit closer. See what's going on. Okay, so the easiest way usually is put it flat. Alright. So you're gonna pull stuff pretty much to one side. You want to kind of bunch and fold while keeping this as
And if I did this correctly and shifted things appropriately, which I'm pretty sure I did, uh, I should have Okay. So if you're able to shift things and move things correctly, that's basically what your seam line looks like. And I'm checking to make sure that nothing accidentally got, say, folded under and stitched in the wrong place. Because I've had those moments where I didn't quite get things maneuvered correctly. It got it stitched. Had to undo that and go back and redo. Um, but yes. So there's, there's the mask as is. We'll go back in. We're going to uh, iron open this bottom seam. But also we're going to create a pre-ironed seam line on the mask before we uh, attach our elastic and everything else. Hello JPS only. How are you doing? We are just working on getting some masks put together. Um, we are using a heavy uh, silk with a tight weave, the kind of silk that you would actually use for like a Victorian ball gown. It's not thin by any means, and I do candle tests or breath tests um, to see if I can blow out a candle. And if I can, it's too thin, so I layer it much thicker. Um, but yeah, uh, two layers of this was very sufficient, so and that's what we are going with right now. doing today. So far, I'm doing pretty good. A lot of I made a face mask. It worked really well. I found what I liked about it and what I didn't like about it and was able to make some adjustments. So all in all, not a bad day so far. Um, we will ham press these next. In fact, I can, I can leave that secondary one until a little bit later. Let's go ahead and just do one so people can see what it's supposed to look like. Uh, where to, ah, there we go. And feel free to ask any questions. I give advice, answer questions, do all kinds of things and what not. Um, this is a ham. If you don't know what a ham is, it is for curvatures uh, when you're sewing. And basically, I had I had some uh, people ask, hey. You know, we saw the the mask that you made. Can you make more? So I found some of my fabric stocks, and I'm making more um, uh, tight closure full face masks that actually cover underneath for health and safety. Cause yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's find the correct curvature. Which could be a little bit more difficult on this because it's a chin piece. Okay, 
think that might actually work. Do, do, do. Mm. Ah, okay, that might actually work. So yeah, you want to iron your seam lines open just so it lays flatter, snugger, better fit. Um, somewhat, I'm actually finally moving back into doing this more for a living. Um, currently, I work delivery uh, for food services. Uh, and I have like so many, de I, have, I have two degrees, several different certifications. Um, and honestly, uh, art and sewing are my passions. I love figuring out a good puzzle so yeah, to me, this is definitely one of the things I was meant to do. And if I can ever find and afford a new computer system, you will also find me gaming a lot. I do stuff like Overwatch. But yes, I love like pattern making, drafting, doing art, all that kind of good stuff. And I would love to make sewing like the thing I do, um, sewing and art and, and being creative as the thing I, I actually do and showing people how to do it too because I honestly like spreading the information, spreading the knowledge as it were. Okay, so you do this and then you want to flip it around and iron it on the outside as well. Yeah, hopefully in the next, uh, I'm going to say in this next week or two, I will be doing a number of uh, streams that have to do with like sewing, um, artwork and whatnot. I do a lot of watercolor painting. I do some digital. Wonderful follower from, from another one of my streams traded basically a commission for this amazing um, tablet that I can actually start doing uh, digital artwork on. I'm so happy. I can't wait to do that. But yeah, okay, so there you go. This is your face piece. So it'll fit so it's underneath the chin and drapes across the nose line. There's the first one. Oh, thank you for the follow. That is awesome. And by all means, um, if you know other people who want to know how to make masks or how to sew and whatnot, by all means, please share me with them. Um, especially, especially if they're just like, look, I just need to know how to make a face mask. Cool. Let's do this. Let's get you sewing so that you can be safer. Do I have certain... Oh, um, I should probably tell you about my certifications. Oh, I tend to stream almost every day. Um, I had a little depression uh, this last week just because of everything that's going on. But I do tend to stream um, almost every day, uh, usually in the mornings. Um, but I'm going to start trying to do a morning cast and then an evening cast. And usually I'm on for about an hour, two hours. Uh, and if people ever have questions, if they need just advice, information, have a question, um, but didn't catch me on stream, it is perfectly okay to whisper me or send me a message um, asking that question, and I will get back to you guys as soon as humanly possible. Um, but yeah, let's see. Most most days that I stream is weekdays. Um, I am thinking of uh, doing some weekend stuff. My weekends can be a little bit hectic. 
but I would not mind doing a little extra. Okay. So that side. Flip it round. There we go. And I finally started using Mob Crush. That's why you haven't seen me on Mixer before. I'm usually on Twitch. Um, but I started using Mob Crush so that I can actually do uh, multiple platforms and, you know, spread the information, get out there, meet new people. Okay, so ham can go away. And then, okay, so I have another ironing board. And this is technically a sleeve iron or a sleeve board. Are you gonna, okay, other way around. And this is if you're doing uh, coats or shirts or things that have like a long slender tubing. You're able to put it on here, iron it out, and get your seam lines done. That's why it's so long and thin. It also works pretty decently well for just doing smaller projects. So I'm going to fold this under by a roughly half an inch. And I'm going to curve around this. Um, mostly I play Overwatch. Um, I've been thinking of picking up Black Desert online. I just need to get an actual... Um, uh, currently I'm on a laptop that's a couple years old. Uh, it's a Radeon. One terabyte. Uh, 16... 16 RAM? I suck with tech. I know this. <laughs> Um, but it's a really, like, a nice gaming laptop, but trying to game and do streaming can be a little wonky at times. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking to do more games once I get the proper setup, because I'm a gamer at heart, and I have been gaming, oh god, since I was five... Um, starting with the uh, Nintendo, Atari, and Geo systems. Moving up to the Sega Genesis, the Super NES, the PlayStation. So yeah, I like... I like games that have a bit of competitive nature to them. Although I can get really competitive. Hyper-focus of a laser-guided pit bull. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I love like superhero-y fantasy kind of stuff. Um, and if you see me on Overwatch, I'm usually playing, um, Moira, who's the technological vampire scientist. I frickin' love her. Uh, Junkrat, or, um, Orisa slash Roadhog if I'm doing tanks. Mostly because I can't hit the broadside of barn, and I know it. Okay, there we go. Finally get the lip to form. Okay, so yeah. So we get all of that kind of nailed down or, you know, get the seam lines basically in place. It'll make it easier when we have to stitch, but also easier when I have to place certain things like the elastic. So what's your game of choice? Oh, I have not played Fortnite. I have been encouraged to be to play Fortnite, and I might at some point. I just have not as of yet. And again, once once I get a uh, a credible 
um, desktop setup, I will probably uh, be investing in those kind of competitive games. Doo, doo, doo. I'm guessing uh, Fortnite is your forte. That doesn't seem safe. <laughs> like, mm, no, I don't need to take my eyes in face. Ooh, Forza. Okay, Forza is a little bit new on me. I should, uh, I'll probably look that up at some point. Yeah, I did World of Warcraft for a long time. For like the first five years that it came out. And I, that, that was the height of my gamerness. Because I was putting down about 12 to 18 hours a day on that thing. How do you like Fortnite? Cause I I like to I like to actually get reviews from people who who play a little bit more heavily. How do you like Fortnite? Um, is it comparable to something like Overwatch, or do you think it's I don't know? Is there a little bit more freeform to it? I want the input. I want to know. got our masks. Looks like this one has more. So. Okay, so for the masks, one's gonna be like that, and the other one inside out. Slide them into place and make sure that they match up decently. Yep. So now, this one's going to be my inside mask. It has a little bit less here, um, not so much in the breathing range. Ooh. Okay. I do love competitive. I mean, hmm, I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it, but I love it, but I hate it. I'm, 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 I'm a little bit aggro. <laughs> I will admit it. I am a bit aggro when it comes to being competitive. I just, I just am. Oh, there we are. I was like, I swear I had, there we go. So two pieces of elastic, roughly 14 inches long each. Uh, there we go. Now, do you have different roles like a uh, support tank and DPS, or is everybody just DPS, you're out on your own? Because I know I tried Apex Legends for a while, and I hated it so much. Just, it was not my game. I tried to get in, but... decent. I am, I'm pretty damn decent. It, um, I tend to be a little bit more of an aggro healer, I will admit this. 
so if I'm with a good team that has good communication skills, I tend to do even better, and I don't have a problem uh, being support and heals. That's that's honestly my jam is being support and heals. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I I tried to get into Apex. I've played Call of Duty before. Didn't exactly love it either. Um, but yeah, just I I couldn't I couldn't get into it, and uh, the community was not very good at helping out a noob. So I was just like, okay, you know what? Whereas Overwatch seemed to be like far more helpful. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I'm better at competition when I have a competent team that can communicate because. If you haven't noticed, I talk a lot. Sometimes I need somebody to go, hey, they're coming from this direction. Or, hey, we need backup over here. Like, give me a place to be. Give me good support and give me good communication. And that makes the team work so much better. Okay, so basically this is the top of the mask. So we want to secure the elastic. We're going to stitch it onto the seam line. So you can see the seam line. We're going to stitch it onto the seam line and then we stitch it all together. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, the last... Oh. Actually, you know, I still think I need to do my competitives for Overwatch. Because they just opened Season 21. I did pretty good. Um, I enjoy doing things like uh, Total Mayhem and uh, Mystery Heroes when it comes to Overwatch. Oh, Lord, no! No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No kids. Never want them. We'll never have them. Was never in the cards for me, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm really okay with that. Some people, great with kids. They are totally meant for it, but I was never one of those people. Hello, GMT Vodka Brother. How you doing? We are just getting our elastic attached for the face mask. Oh, uh, we are actually sewing together like a full covering face mask um, because of all that, the joy of the COVID stuff going around. Um, I do seamstress type stuff. I pattern draft, tailoring, uh, artwork. Sometimes I even do uh, video games. I'm just looking to replace the current system I have because it does not like running streaming and, and gaming at the same time, which is a shame. So yeah, I am teaching people how to make a full face mask that actually fits, doesn't slip, um, and will provide far more protection than, say, the surgical mask that most people are wearing right about now that they aren't wearing correctly. I'm taking a lot of the guesswork out for people because, hey, not everybody's going to know how to wear a surgical mask correctly. Um, if you can, buy a N95 and N99 masks and donate them to hospitals. Um, especially if you can get somebody to either make a mask or if you have the ability to make a mask on your own. Try trying to get it to backslip. There we go. So how are you doing today? Do, do, do. Okay, so this is called a surgeon's knot. So you pass your needle through once and then twice and then bolt. 
and a surgeon's knot um, is not only tighter, it bites down on itself a lot harder, so it's it doesn't have that tendency to slip, unlike um, what certain other uh, what certain other things will do, unfortunately. So yes. Okay. And if you guys have questions, need advice, whatever, on all different manner of subjects. Uh, let's see, this is the Logitech, I think it's the 290, if I'm not highly mistaken. Uh, so I have a HD Pro webcam, the C920, and then, which would be this one right here. I love the quality on this thing. It is just, it's brilliant. It's amazing. It's lovely. The other camera me, 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 is just the camera that is on uh, my my Omen. Um, I have a, a Radeon Omen uh, gaming laptop. Uh, it's two, three years old now at this point. And I love this thing to bits and pieces. It's an, it's a nice little monster. It doesn't always like to run games and streaming at the same time, though. It's, oh, man, the, the lag rate was terrible. The frames per second were just a joke. I might as well have been on the Lunchbox Dell. It was so bad. But, yeah, I am, I am hmm, even with everything going on, I am working towards uh, building myself a, a desktop so that I can stream and game at the same point in time. And you guys can actually see what's going on and have some fun with it. Where did I just... There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, just past the seam line. We just want enough of a bite that it stays on there. And yes, I am avoiding this particular needle like the Dickens because I won't feel it go through until it's almost all the way through. <laughs> You are so so welcome. Um, this uh, this cast should be up um, saved afterwards. So if you need to like go back and wander through and and see it to the end, you will get all of it. I am showing you guys start to finish. I don't care how long this takes, start to finish. So you won't be in the dark. <laughs> it is there. Like put two or three stitches down just so that it holds it in place. Let's see, tomorrow's Friday, so I will probably be on roughly 10 a.m. to noon-ish, um, and then I might be on in the evening closer to 9 o'clock. Um, that's Pacific Standard Time. I'm in California. So hopefully I will see you all there. Um, I might be doing uh, some designing, uh, some drafting and whatnot tomorrow. Uh, the more interactive people are, the more information I get, uh, the more say that they will have in kind of like what I do, what I design, what I show, and that kind of thing. So hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow, and we will have some more fun, more questions, more answers, more advice, all that kind of good stuff. And in the future, I cannot wait to get back to gaming on some of my streams for y'all.
Zip the nose piece real quick just to see. Okay. Okay, so my nose. 